Hello everyone, welcome to a new video and in this video I'm going to talk about how you can install Raspberry Pi OS in your Raspberry Pi without having any kind of keyboard, mouse, display, anything. Okay, so it could be your Raspberry Pi 0, Raspberry Pi 3, Raspberry Pi 4, any Raspberry Pi and we are not going to use any display or uh, like keyboard, mouse, uh, LAN cable, anything. So what you just need is your Raspberry Pi, a memory card and a computer. Okay, this is like what you need and also you need a hotspot or router something like that so that we can connect our raspberry pi with a network or access point okay so if you don't have a router you can also connect it with your uh, like your mobile's hotspot so that's it so let's see how you can do this So at first we have to install a Raspberry Pi Imager using which we can download a Raspberry Pi OS and we can burn it in the memory card. So you just write Raspberry Pi OS in Google and the first link you will get will be the official website of Raspberry Pi which is raspberrypi.org and if you just open that you will get the Raspberry Pi OS from there and as you can see like it says install Raspberry Pi OS using Raspberry Pi Imager so you just download the Raspberry Pi Imager. So I am using Windows so I will download for Windows in your case uh, uh, you can all it is also available for mac and ubuntu also okay so after that you just install it so it will take some time to install so as you can see here i am installing the software and after that you just open it okay now here you have to select which os you want to like install in your pi so you will see like if you just go and select the choose os like you will see several options you have okay so you can choose any of them depending on your requirement but i am so uh, like as you can see uh, here you can get the raspberry pi os light raspberry pi os pro and things like that uh, but again uh, we are going to install the raspberry pi os 32 bit the first one okay it is a standard one and then after that you just select a memory card so here i am using 8 gb memory card but uh, a 16 gb class 10 memory card is recommended okay so then you just click right here and you just press uh, yes okay so it will basically erase your memory card totally and then it will basically download the os and then basically you write it and uh, so it will take some time okay so it will some depending on the internet speed it will take some time and uh, it basically downloads around i think 1.5 to 2 i think i don't know 1.5 to 2 gb around i maybe it will download the os and then it will write and verify it and after that you can just uh, click in the continue and uh, that's okay so the job of this software is done here okay so the next thing we need to do is before we will put this memory card inside our raspberry pi uh we need to uh like we need to enable the ssh okay so we need to write some files in the memory card to enable the ssh for the first thing and the second thing is we have to write something into a memory card so that after booting up it should connect to our local router or hotspot okay so basically your pi will boot up and automatically the ssh will be enabled and it will automatically connect to your local hotspot or router and then we will connect our pc to the same router and then we will uh, connect to our raspberry pi through our pc using ssh and that's why we don't need any kind of display keyboard mouse anything so we just need to write few things in the memory card okay so let's see. So here as you can see you cannot see you cannot access the memory card actually so in your case if it is like this what you need to do you just disconnect your memory card and again you connect it and then you will be able to see the boot folder okay so if you see here you can see able to see the boot folder you just open the boot folder and then you need to create two files like i said the first file will be for ssh so you just click click here and just create a new file you don't need to write anything in this file you just create the file name ssh in caps and make sure there is no extension it should be ssh and uh, one thing you have to make sure that your show extension should be on so you just go to the menu in the above you go to show and from there you make sure the file extension is should be enabled if it is disabled in that case you will be not able to see any of the extension of any files so make sure it's enabled and then after enabling it make sure there is no extension in the ssh file so it will be only ssh not ssh.txt okay so if there is txt remove it after that you need to create our second file which will be like so that our pi will connect to a local router so how can we create it we just we have to put an give it a name wps applicant and you need to copy this code there so i'll put the code in the description from there you copy the name here wps applicant uh, make sure there is no spelling mistake or like anything like that okay because it's quite case sensitive and you make sure the name is correct here 
So you just write your WPS applicant dot .conf. Make sure you add dot .conf because it's a configuration file. Okay. So you save it, and after that, after saving it, uh, you just need to open the file in Notepad plus uh, plus. Notepad plus plus recommended. You can also use Notepad. Uh, so and then you copy this code. This again, this code will be in the description, so you can copy it. You paste it there, and then you just change the things. So you just need to change the your SSID, network SSID. Basically, is the name of your like hotspot or your router. So in my case, is Sparklers, and then you need to put the password also. Okay, and you change these two things only here. So you can change the country. You have to you can change it, but if you just leave it at US, I think it it will work. Okay, but again, you can change it. So after you change the SSID and PSK, you just save it. Okay. and that's it these are the changes you need to do in your memory card and after doing these changes you just like uh, you, you just eject your memory card and put that in your raspberry pi now you insert the memory card in your pi and you give it power and within very few seconds it will boot up and then we need to find out the ip address of the pi so that we can connect to the pi okay so to do so the first thing you can do you can go to your router setup page if you are using a router uh like in my case i have to just write 192.168.0.1 in your case it can be different and from there i need to go to my lan setup and from there actually i can see like i can see like the ip address of my all the local connected devices so for my pi it's 192.168.0.105 okay but if you don't know how to open your router page or if you are using a mobile hotspot in that case you need advanced ip scanner a software called advanced ip scanner so you can simply download that so when it's a free software so you go to this site and you download it so basically using this software you can like scan your lan so how you can scan your lan in my case i have to write 192.168.0.12254 now why i have written this number and what will be this number for you i'll show you okay but for now just uh, i'm just scanning it and uh, we will see like uh, your pi will be listed here okay because as pi has connected to a local like the local like router or your local hotspot you will see the pi here which is ip address and you will see all the other devices also which are connected to your local access point okay so as you can see here within very few second the pi should be here and as you can see the pi is here 192.168.0.105 so using this case using this way you can find it you find your address of your pi now why i have written that 192.168 Like zero dot one two two fifty four. It's just that one two two fifty four basically means I am telling to scan the whole network. And why one nine two one six eight dot zero dot that? Uh, because I have find out my local IP, uh, the IP of this computer, which is one nine two one six eight zero dot one zero zero. So I know the uh, IP of my Pi will be one nine two one six eight zero dot something. That's why I have written one nine two one six eight zero dot one two two fifty four. Now. So you just open your command prompt and in then you just write ipconfig and it will show you a local IP. So in my case, if you see IP version four address, so if you see here, one nine two one six eight zero dot one zero zero. So uh, the pi address will be definitely one nine two one six eight zero dot something. Okay, this is for sure. Now we have to find that what will be that something in, instead of like one hundred. And for that, you have to write here one nine two one six eight zero dot one two three fifty four, so that it will it will scan the whole network and it will find that IP for us. And finally, here now we have to get into your Pi as we know the IP, so we will use Putty here. So Putty is SSH client, so you can search Putty in Google and you will find it easily. So you just download Putty, and after that you just install it and you open it. It will be something like this. So here you give the IP, we just find out. So It's one nine two one six eight zero one zero five in my case. Port would be twenty two by default. Then you create yes here after pressing enter, and then uh, the username is pi and the password is raspberry. It's r a s p b w r y, and then you just get into it, and then as you can see, we are inside the pi. Now we can like do anything we want in the pi. Okay. Now this is about the SSH. Now how you can get the screen of pi without using any kind of display? You can use VNC viewer. Now, how you can use VNC and VNC viewer, I will show you in the next video. So stay tuned for that, and I hope like you understood how you can do the whole process. So in this process, you don't need any kind of display or keyboard, mouse, or anything. You just need, like I said, the Raspberry Pi Zero, the memory card, and your PC, and you just need any kind of router or hotspot. So you don't, if you don't have a router, you you can use your mobile hotspot for this purpose also. Okay. So I hope you like this, uh, like this video, and. Uh, So stay tuned uh, for future videos as I will make more basic videos for Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Zero. 
So that's it guys for this video. See you in the next one.